Are you ready, kids? Get your parents' permission, check your mailbox, and grab your shopping cart. It's time for the Adventures in Collecting podcast. I'm Eric. And I'm Dave. Welcome Welcome to to Adventures Adventures in Collecting, Collecting, where we talk toy news, culture, and hauls, along with our journeys as collectors. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adventures in Collecting. Hi. <laughs> wow. We're back. I love it. Dave, always bringing the energy. Dave, what, what, I mean, it's, it, I, I don't even know if it's, it's a joke at this point, because I don't think we have episodes where it's just the two of us anymore. I just don't think no. they exist. Um, <laughs> so did, did I mean, you... if, if, there, if there was a lead to bury, um, this would be the location in which we would bury it. But there isn't one, so we're not going to. Yeah, there, there's, there's a, a, an empty graveyard of leads waiting, <laughs> waiting to be buried yeah, these days. Just, I'm still yeah. reeling from the energy that Dave just put out. Like, I don't know. I think this interview's over. That was, that was it. That was the peak. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> I don't know if we're ever going to get to live show status, but I, uh, like... I'm gonna oh, have to do that in person, <laughs> and that'll be your and that'll be your pop one day. Yeah, one day we'll earn it. You'll you'll earn I, that pop. I uh, I I just went like kind of overboard with the dreams and aspirations right there. <laughs> what is so coming back? You know, I'm picturing like a moment where you hold up like a one, two, three, and everyone all at once just all monotone goes hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! One day when we can when we can all be around people again. Well, joining us today on the podcast is Tony Colella, the master model artist behind overseeing model generation for Marvel, G.I. Joe, Fortnite, Ghostbusters, and Power Rangers over at Hasbro. This has been a long time coming. Tony, welcome to Adventures in Collecting. Oh, well, thank you very much. What a wonderful intro. Uh, As I was talking to you guys before, a big fan of your guys' uh, Instagram page, I've Clicked on your uh, all your links to all these pre-orders, uh, much to my wife's ch- chagrin. Uh, and I just keep buying toys. So thank you guys. <laughs> well, I thank you for making them. Says. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No problem. I collect uh, numerous, numerous toy lines uh, as well as many other things. So thank you guys for uh, sponsoring my bad habit or, or encouraging my bad habit. <laughs> I, th- I think in our in our in our community community we we uh, we call people like us hashtag enablers, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yeah. I have a few people that are uh, have blamed me and my addictive personality for getting them into things that they really didn't want <laughs> or need. Uh, so yeah, it's good that other people are out there doing the same. Well, speaking of getting into things and all of the things that you collect, uh, we start off every episode when we have a guest by asking them, uh, what are you currently collecting right now? Okay. Uh, this show's an hour, right? So we can probably get... <laughs> <laughs> roughly. Okay. Roughly. Okay. Okay. All right. We might want to put, uh, put it to two, but um, literally everything. Um, but number one collectible right now is the 1995 McDonald's Batman Forever drinking glasses i don't know if you remember those wonderful promotional glasses but i'm obsessed um that of course i bought that and then my friends are like whoa what are those and then they start looking into it and then they're like well wait a minute it was flintstones the movie collector cups (laughs) then now i'm like all right well i gotta get those Uh, (laughs) but mostly comics uh still go you know i'd like to go weekly but i've got my my pull box over at uh, the comic shops, Chris's comics up in Seabrook, New Hampshire. So uh, a little plug there, uh, but lots of toys, lots of toys. So mostly uh, tons of stuff from Hasbro, obviously Marvel legends is what got me in the game. Uh, I'm still obsessed with that, that line ever since toy biz Um, GI Joe uh, classified, of course, Uh, a lot of stuff I work on. Or, and with Lenny on um, and the team, so tons of that stuff. Uh, Mattel, all the uh, He-Man Origins I'm super big on, and WWE, Master of the WWE Universe is, is, is fantastic. Um, super 7, 
of course, NECA with the Ninja Turtle stuff, all their horror stuff, uh, and anything nostalgic like 80s toys, Mad Balls, Cowboys and Mumesa, <laughs> Inhumans. Like, I'll, I'll get deep cops, like everything and anything that uh, I can find for a good price. Wow. We yeah. should have asked you what don't you collect. Should that's <laughs> should that's some more. <laughs> that is a that's, more appropriate question. Yeah, I could keep going, but I'll I'll stop it there. McFarlane, I do like some McFarlane stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it's it sounds kind of kind of like us co- like you you cover it, it you being one person cover collectively what we both <laughs> here collect. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, WWE, of course. All all of uh, the elite stuff from Super Red Two. I can keep. It's it's really like I can't stop myself. It's good stuff. I mean, it, we've we yeah we we've said it multiple times this you know since we've been doing this pod. But uh, it's it's a it's quite a time to be alive as a toy collector because there's like so much good stuff. Like I, I oh think it, historically we're gonna look back at this time period and be like, wow. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. this was like what it's what a time. I don't know if this is it, uh, but I kind of see it as like everyone kind of like our our generation, kind of that eighties nineties toy boom, uh, is able to like kind of come back, and everything's exploding from that era, and just um, that you know we call it action brands at Hasbro, all that all those like toys like Marvel and GI Joe and Transformers are just performing so well uh he-man's back obviously um so it's it's crazy people from that like 80s 90s toy era are getting like a a resurgence and and for myself i have a a a son um four years old so when i see that stuff on shelf especially like a massive universe origins or he has the he has like the second biggest marvel legends collection (laughs) in the world probably behind me (laughs) Uh, so like being able to provide him with like He-Man and like Merman, and he's a big Roboto guy. <laughs> it's, it's crazy to see that happen, you know, in 2021. So does like He-Man fight Spider-Man? Oh yeah. Oh, all awesome. Day. All day. Yeah. And riding a Jurassic Park Velociraptor, you know, we, we get into it. That's amazing. Um, so getting into... Hasbro itself. Um, you've been with Hasbro since 2006. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about your role there and how you wound up at Hasbro. Sure. Yeah. Uh, right now, I'm the master model artist, um, but basically a manager across uh, all those uh, brands that you uh, listed at the top of the show. So uh, Marvel, Fortnite, GI Joe, Power Rangers, Ghostbusters. Um, and then I kind of help out on other brands, uh, just cause I'm, you know, I've been there for so long. I, I help out all the kind of younger talent in the building on how to, how to make toys essentially. Um, so I, uh, when I, growing up, I've been a huge, obviously collector, you guys know, um, and comic fan. So I wanted to do something with comic books, uh, and, uh, went to RISD, uh, got a, major in um, illustration, but I kind of like, I dabbled in sculpting. And by the time, by the end of my journey, I would sculpted a bunch. I painted a lot of Marvel and I didn't like quite know what I wanted to do. I found this position at um, Hasbro uh, for a model artist, which was awesome. It was super interesting. And it was, it had just uh, so happened that Hasbro got the Marvel license. I'm like, okay. It's local. I grew up in Massachusetts. Uh, it's down in Rhode Island. It's local. They have Marvel. This is like the perfect position. So I got in. They didn't have anybody on Marvel at the time because they had just gotten the license and it was like Spider Man 3. You know, I think your guy's favorite movie, right? Am I? <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't, don't put words best. in our mouth, please. Oh, <laughs> uh, like uh, the, uh, the Norton Incredible Hulk kind of Iron Man. Uh, movies had just kind of hit, uh, but and Marvel Legends had just gotten turned over there, and I, I was a huge Marvel Legends fan. That's that's what got me in the game. Uh, I'd always wanted to work on Legends, uh, dream job. Uh, so kind of started working on that, and luckily they they hired me full time, and uh, yeah, just been working 
uh, in the mall shop for, I don't know, 12, 12 years or so, kind of dabbling in design, uh, doing uh, paint masters, creating all the, all the paint masters for multiple brands like Marvel, G.I. Joe, Indiana Jones way back. Uh, you know, Man, I, I they, love those, all oh, those 2008 G, um, uh, Indiana Jones figures, those three and three quarter ones. Pretty sweet, right? Liter- literally, uh, permanent staples on my desk display. Oh, that's are oh, the, amazing. Uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark Indy and the, um, the, uh, the Sean Connery from, um, Last Crusade. Oh, per- permanent so staples on my desk. Yeah. And that's, that's where I, uh, met Dwight was we were working on Marvel. We worked on Indy together. Um, and then G.I. Joe was working with uh, John Warden. So met a lot of incredible uh, designers and uh, at, at this company. Just a lot of, a lot of inspiration around. The, the best part of the Hasbro for me is the, there's artists, then there's you know, kind of the marketing, then there's the engineering, and then it's like uh, you know, the social uh, aspect to it. So it's, it's this weird combination of um, – all these different like kind of brain types, <laughs> all these different uh, thinkings, but it, somehow it works. Um, so it, it's awesome to like have been there. You guys have an it, there across the board. It's like, and, and you know, we've talked about this with with people, you know, countless times. But like the team that you guys have there across all of the brands, whether whether it is GI Joe, you know, and and, and Lenny or Transformers mm-hmm. and Lenny and Mark. Um, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, John on and now, you know, kind of heading up the Power Rangers stuff, you know, oh, yeah. S- Stevie and, and Ryan and Dan and Dwight and, you know, and, and when Laura was there, I mean, yes. you guys have, it's, it's like insane. Like you have like the, the, uh, nineties NBA dream team of, <laughs> of toy people. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And, and the fact that the company's allowing, uh, you know, kind of more social media engagement and, you know, I, I had that, uh opportunity to talk to a lot of people at San Diego Comic Cons and uh you know toy fairs and things like that. But it's awesome to be able to talk to you guys, obviously, since I'm a big fan of your page too. Um but yeah, there's there's some incredible artists and marketers and people that just have such passion uh for toys in that, which is great. You know, at a corporation you can definitely find people that don't have the passion but want to do the job and do the job well. But we're lucky enough to have these people that do that job and love doing it. So it's it's amazing. And, and you, you really have to worry about or kind of look out for putting too much passion <laughs> into it because you can get caught up in the details, you know, especially for artists. Like we're getting in there and we're noodling and we want to make something better. But you got to hit deadlines to hit maximum capacity at stores. And, you know, it's just, uh, you know, we could I could be on a project for a year like noodling things but you just don't have that kind of time frame well speaking of of the creative process uh mm. you know as you mentioned you know you, you work with a lot of uh different you know ips at hasbro um what are some of the challenges jumping between such different creative environments because i mean you have stuff that's you know with the marvel legends it's coming from comics and film and then you have gi joe which is effectively you know brand new character designs and then now with Fortnite coming in and you know video game renderings like what's what's <laughs> yeah. it like jumping from from all of those different creative environments sure uh the this a huge difference between a licensed property and a property owned by hasbro um there's a lot more not not more more scrutiny on license but you have more eyes on it right like because there's still just as much scrutiny on hasbro owned ips like uh, power rangers and transformers that certainly has a ton of love a ton of eyes and a ton of people just kind of like oh is this the right choice is this the right choice but you know when you're working with partners um like a, a marvel or a lucasfilm or fortnite epic uh and fortnite uh you know you obviously have to appease them as well so there's like a little bit more uh just not pressure but you know you want to you want to please them just as much as you want to please your own internal partners um so that's like that's a huge huge difference in just like the process right so there's um different gates and different um approvals that you need to kind of get through to get to your your end goal uh and 
you know, we, to an extent, in, internally you have those, but it's not like an external partner and like, you know, keeping that external partner happy. You know, we want to be partners for life, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, so it's, it's an interesting dynamic. And then internally there's different teams, right? So for me, you know, I, with all the different brands that I'm on, you know, uh, a Lenny, works differently than a Dwight. I'm just kind of naming people that you've kind of, you you know, are on Fan First Fridays and there's so many more like Earl Loretta on Power Rangers or John Warden. And there's so many more people I could name, but dealing with them and dealing with how they work is, comp- you know, it's kind of in the same system, but works a little bit different. And like some, some designers like to have a little bit more control. Some marketers like to have a little bit more control. Um, so kind of like, me being there for 15 years has helped me know what, uh, you know, a John Gordon likes or know what a Ryan Ting is going to like. So I can kind of help and guide my team to kind of appease those different, uh, you know, kind of gatekeepers. Um, so it's an interesting, that dynamic alone is, 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 uh, is awesome. Cause I just, I just like dealing with people. So, and engineering is, of course is different across the board. Uh, and is one of the most crucial, crucial departments at Hasbro is the engineering department, uh, just as much as design and marketing and, and, and mall shop and brand teams. It's like they're, they're really, they work so hard. Uh, did that answer the question? I think that was a lot. No, absolutely. I mean, it, oh. <laughs> and it's, it's one of those things that it's, it's always fun to hear this process because I think a lot of people, you know, at the consumer level, right? You know, it's, you're used to seeing a toy either show up for pre-order online or, you know, you, you see it in store and like you see the finished product, right? You see the, the painted articulated figure with all of the deco and the paint hits and, you know, and everything in place, you know, ready, ready, ready to be posed and played with and enjoyed. But like the fact that there are so many, like little pieces that you don't think about, you know, in terms of just kind of like whether it's an actor's likeness that needs to be cleared and then, (laughs) you know, like the model gets created and then the engineers, you know, have to figure out how the joint system works and to make sure that the figure can move the way that the character does. And like all, all of those little intricacies that, that get you to that final product. That's, that's the stuff we love to hear about so oh yeah it's it's uh, and it's funny because each department slaps the other department's hands <laughs> so you know uh design will go buck wild and the engineering is like no you can't do that what are you doing <laughs> like and then <laughs> i'll come in and i'm like oh what if we put five thousand paint ops on something and like no you can't do that <laughs> and it's like you know well, how about we do uh, the mutated version of tiger shark and then like people are like no no that'll never sell it will sell <laughs> uh but yeah stuff like that it's like it's kind of funny especially like character assorting and stuff uh just like you know obviously people have favorites but then there's people there's stuff that sells well and then you like the 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 ratio and like how you build them and like what's going to be cost effective what's all new what's not all new is like such a ridiculous balancing act (laughs) uh that you know some of these brands just do so well um it's difficult it's just really difficult there's so there's so much work that gets gets into you know giving you the wolverine that you've (laughs) had you've had like 20 wolverines but like there's a reason behind it and also who doesn't want another wolverine I yeah. personally, I do. <laughs> yeah, there's always got to be a Wolverine. There's yep. always got to be a Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, just... you need you need the A tier. You know, when you're thinking about on shelf, you really need some of those heavy hitters. Yeah, um, and and you look across the the, the board from every toy company ever. Uh, and, someone's got to anchor there. the line, <laughs> and it, someone's yeah. always got to anchor the wave. Yeah, and that that balancing act is just super difficult, but somehow all that hand slapping works. <laughs> Um, so you played a major role in the announcement of uh, Hasbro's first Victory Royale series figure yeah. when uh, Snake Eyes dropped earlier this year. What's it like helping to develop a new line from the ground up, especially on the heels of a rather successful product from another brand? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, luckily, I have uh, incredible people that work with me, and um, I have a, a, a very talented model artist, uh, Shanae. 
who just came on to my team. And uh, she was brand new, <laughs> uh, just like Fortnite was brand new. And, you know, we put her on um, some Fortnite stuff. And she's been working with the design teams uh, to develop that asset. And it was an awesome experience helping out, A, growing her as an employee, uh, and B, growing that brand uh, to what it needs to be to, you know, kind of go up against a brand that's already well established on shelf. Um, and then the, uh, working with design and then the brand teams were awesome. Uh, I, I love working with, uh, the brand teams cause they're the, they're the guys, they're the keepers of, you know, kind of the, the line look, uh, consumer facing line look for, you know, packaging social media experience. Um, so working super close with them, working with designers, um, like Edgar and, and Kevin, um, and just like coming up with that cool pose, uh, and just kind of delivering that, uh, new deco scheme, uh, for a character like that was awesome. And, and, you know, you guys have seen where that, that was like, that was super cool, obviously doing snake eyes for Fortnite. <laughs> uh, but then like already knowing what was in the works before that was like, Oh, this is awesome. But I can't wait for them to see uh all the next next guys the like, uh, chaos agent um midas or i can't i apologize if i'm butchering his name but uh and links uh for that wave one is just yeah and, and ripley like ripley out of control oh god yeah <laughs> yeah meowsles, exactly so like knowing those were there and uh showing that snake eyes was like yeah this is awesome the branding is awesome the the images that we're showing is awesome. The 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 pre order went really well, um, and then knowing that that next like wave one was gonna showcase, I think I think it was at a fan first. Uh, uh the first uh the first uh pulse or not pulse con uh the the fan fest Hasbro fan, fan fest. fest. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. There's so many events at Hasbro that I get tongue tied. Uh, <laughs> so hey, I apologize. Keep, keep them coming, man. Keep yeah. those oh, events yeah. coming. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So, like, definitely that that having that like first look was super cool, especially on, you know, seeing that on Instagram on Hasbro Pulse was like, and seeing the positive response to it was was awesome, and just knowing what was coming. It was also super well timed because it was when the right around when the skin drop. So, so uh, admittedly, I, oh, I, yeah. I clock a lot of hours in Fortnite my, myself. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Um. So it was right around when the skin dropped and. I was super stoked because you know the 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 classified line has gotten me back into GI Joe. It's the first time I've cared about GI Joe and since uh-huh. I was like twelve. <laughs> yeah, um, since you were playing with my old GI Joes. Accurate, accurate. <laughs> um, and you know when when it dropped, it was just kind of like this weird social media moment. We were like, wait a second, Hasbro's making Fortnite figures, <laughs> yeah. or is this just kind of like a fun little? gi joe spinoff thing and there was literally crickets like no information about anything and then all of a sudden it was like you know uh the 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 teaser came out for the fortnite figures and everyone was just like oh boy here we go <laughs> <laughs> that was that that was what was so funny about it was it was that kind of mysterious you know almost like video game drop right where it just like yeah drop it there and just like see what happens um so it, yeah partnering with epic to time that was oh my god shaved years off of my life um and and many of people on the team where it was just you know it's amazing it didn't leak oh in in today's day and age it's amazing (laughs) well i I wish i could go into everything on that but the time frame that it took for us to like get that go and then it's up on um uh the internet and 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 pre-order was insane it was absolutely insane. So like, it, it's awesome to have a partner like Epic and then they trust us to like put this kind of product out. Um, but uh, one of the things that Hasbro is kind of excelling at is kind of speed to market and just, um, you know, is there something new? All right, let's go. And then like, it's like an all, all hands on deck. And then like everyone's just as passionate and it's like, you know, might be a late night couple late nights but uh we're gonna get it done and we're gonna get it done effectively so the other thing too is like you know there are like we were just saying there's so many events that 
Oh, yeah. um, you know, it, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of time in between announcements. So there's that level of transparency is there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And and for you, for the company to be able to put, um, you know, it, it it's kind of silly to have a face, you know, even myself coming on your podcast. It There's like hundreds of employees behind me when I talk, right? Or and I'm not, I'm not being a representative of Hasbro as I talk to you, but you know, just, uh, that's where I spent my professional career in the toy industry. Um, but you know, just having people represent the product, there's so many people behind that process. And like, like you said, that, that pre-order for, um, snake eyes was tons of people at Hasbro marketing, design, engineering, model shop and then people at epic too of course our awesome partner over there is just like giving us all this information so it's it's there's so many people involved with this um it's incredible that we're able to wrangle it and then get it out effectively so you you talked about some of the um the the challenges that uh you know that come with working you know uh on a project like that especially you know something under a tight deadline Mm -hmm. um I feel like one of like the the cliche, but it's always it's always an interesting answer. You know, is asking an artist, you know, what's what's the most difficult thing they've worked on. So, what would you say is is the most difficult product uh, you've worked on at Hasbro that you can speak about? <laughs> Ooh, that I can speak about. <laughs> I have like fifty different answers. I'm going to start with <laughs> one of the things that made me sweat the most was going to a show and event, and I had I had grown up like liking Transformers. Um, but the mall shop would go to a toy event, um, like a toy fair, San Diego Comic Con, and we were affectionately called the Toy Doctors because the mall shop creates prototypes. We create, you know, not just the aesthetic on an actual physical toy, but also kind of like the function. We have some guys that have been there forever uh, that have, are just like master craftsmen. Uh, you know, I I have the title master in my department, but it's pale in comparison into some of the guys that have been there for 20, 30 years. Uh, but going to an event and then uh, someone be like, Hey, can you make this combiner? <laughs> and they just like ripping it out of the pack and then on the showroom floor, transforming a transformer and then like putting it together. Like I'm pretty good, but it was like sweat and bullets. Cause the show's about to open and I'm like trying to put Bruticus together. And <laughs> I've never, <laughs> never, played with the transformer like this before and they're looking at me as the toy doctor at the show the resident toy doctor at the show and it's like oh god <laughs> let's see if we can figure this out um but one of the biggest things um for me was kind of uh developing the uh we kind of we kind of call it photo reel uh, some other companies use like uh you know this is basically the face printing technology um that kind of came in and um, we're doing across our theatrical figures for Marvel and just developing those files. And like, it was, it was definitely trial and error on a lot of those. So coming up with that process, how we get that information to our vendors, um, you know, <laughs> sometimes it would kind of come in uh, like super dark and they're like, how do you counteract that? How do you join the scaling? Um, so being a part of that was the, and the troubleshooting on that was crazy. Yeah, that, uh, that whole concept is, is still, you know, we're, we're now like a few years into, you know, mm. the the bigger toy companies using that technology to, you know, to create more lifelike, uh, yeah. you know, figures, especially in like the, the 112 and even Hasbro in the Star Wars line in the three and three quarter inch scale, which is mind blowing. <laughs> right. But um, it, th- that entire process, I think, is, is fascinating because it's like effectively a, like a, printer right like it's actually printing the face on the the figure yeah i can't go into the details of how how it's made i can't unlock the magic um uh to use oreo as an example (laughs) (laughs) it's a quick oreo plug there um love a good oreo (laughs) right (laughs) um but um yeah essentially using the different layers opacities and just kind of dialing in what kind of information needs to go to the vendor for that to be an effective file is it it, it was a challenge because we weren't doing it much on any of our 
product, you know, I think Marvel had started it. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's been a while uh, since we first started that. So, and that kind of leads into our like current uh, product. Cause you, you're, you're seeing, we talked about the snake eyes um, drop, right? Where that in, you guys saw that it was a, a digital render, right? Mm -hmm. So the transition from, you know, I'm a little old, I'm like old school enough to have seen, um, our sculpting department go from wax toys, like wax toy sculpting, uh, and then transition to the digital realm, um, which is incredible. And I can't imagine that I came in at that and, and been, I've been there long enough to see that transition. Um, cause there's something magical about, you know, seeing that old wax sculpting kind of method. And then now this digital kind of age has kind of hit Hasbro. And we were, when I first got there in, in up until a few years ago, we were still making physical prototypes. Um, and, we, and we still make physical prototypes too. I'm not, I'm, uh, we still make a ton of that, but uh, the digital um, renders and like getting in, like I'm, I'm old school. So I was like, you know, acrylic paints and airbrushes and like, just how you would make a custom figure is kind of like how we were making prototypes essentially. Yeah, we uh, saw a bit of that on the the um the six one six documentary, actually with, with uh uh Laura. Laura on the the cyborg uh Spider Man. Yes. Uh yeah, and she she's incredible. Incredible artist. But yeah, yeah, just that switch from that prototyping process uh to kind of digital reveals and digital prototyping and and all that stuff like Hasbro's really uh good at kind of hitting getting ahead of the curve a little bit so they're always looking for that new faster way or or a better way to work um so digital is kind of like that next step for prototyping um so sculpting went to digital and like kind of the the more uh, model artist is is kind of turning digital, and you're seeing that in the renders. You saw it for a ton of pre-orders, uh, Ghostbusters and uh, Fortnite and Marvel, Age of Apocalypse, stuff like that. So, you know, we're gonna get, we're gonna keep growing, we're gonna keep getting better. And it's just awesome to kind of foster that talent. But it's it's weird to go from airbrush to uh, Cintiq, that's for sure. So we started to talk a little bit about the process right there. Um, mm -hmm. But when designing a model for a figure, um, how does a character go from a panel on a comic, a scene in a film, or a render in a video game to that physical model, to that uh, that model? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's crazy how quick, how slow and how quick it goes. Um, it, it, in terms of like a theatrical release, you know, it takes a while for that... Um, a company get up and running and give us assets and then once we get assets we're we're up and running we're like grabbing as much as that uh, as much as our partners can give us and just taking all that um for in terms of theatrical all that reference all that concept art and like cobbling something together and you know constantly getting updates from our our uh, uh partners uh and just you know sculpting painting and then all of a sudden oh we gotta go back to sculpt on this this thing changed <laughs> so it's like <laughs> two steps forward three steps back or uh whatever paul abdul said <laughs> years ago <laughs> i don't know something um, with an animated cat yeah exactly <laughs> uh so um yeah it's it's an interesting process um but never has it been easier uh with for at least I'm going to speak just from Marvel just because that's my wheelhouse I've been, I've known that for years, but, uh, having like Marvel unlimited and being able to go back, uh, mm -hmm. and go through panel by panel. Cause the, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest, uh, hangups for doing some of these figures is the back view. <laughs> Cause True. You never, like if you're on Google, no one's putting up the back view of any of these characters, right? And there's not always like a library of turn art for these characters, but Marvel Unlimited has changed the game. Because before I would have to like go back into my long boxes, and that's not easy. I don't want to go back into my long boxes and, find, and flip through comics. So Marvel Unlimited, go back in there, flip through 
how many issues of Infinity Gauntlet <laughs> to get that perfect uh, uh, back view of a character. Um, same thing with Disney Plus, like having all these movies at your fingertips to like pause. Uh, so when I had worked on um, the Children of Thanos five pack for Amazon, um, being able to go back through Disney Plus and then go through the Avengers uh, movies and like find those snippets of those characters to get all those details to really get in there. Cause when we first originally developed those figures, you know, it was concept art and it was kind of uh, a couple maquette uh, images, but to like go back and then go through the movie. And that's kind of like an important thing in, in toy making is that's how people know that character. They don't know about, the you know scarlet witch costume on set in that lighting it's kind of translating what you see on film rather than what that actual costume looks like in regular light if that makes sense mhm mhm um so that's kind of like a big um challenge is like looking at the scenes compiling what that costume looks like when it's on that you know the red planet with Thanos where everyone first saw Thanos and he looked like Homer Simpson pink yeah you guys remember that, <laughs> that first teaser image yep um well, you know if we made him that color we'd be in trouble i mean that's a that's a great example though because i, I mean personally i i i completed the the children of thanos you know figure by figure and then the the call of city and build a figure Yes. And to me, there's there's two things, right? So, like, yeah, like a film accurate, you know, a, a true, truly film accurate Call of Obsidian is awesome, you know, completely different than the one based off of the concept art. Yes, yes. But there's still, to me, there's, like, this certain level of charm. I, I Maybe it's because, you know, we're we're toy we're we're toy <laughs> bloggers and like we love the process but like i think there's something infinitely charming about like why the original call obsidian looks the way he does and it's like no he doesn't look like that in the film still a badass figure but like ultimately that figure was made because you guys wanted to get it out in a timely manner so that way it was out when the, you know, because these toys are ultimately also for children to play with and kids to, you know, <laughs> yeah, build. So, yeah. like, you know, you want to have the big bad guys out, you know, in, a, in a, a time frame that makes sense for when the movie is on, you know, in theaters. And that's why we have a con- what ends up being a concept art, you know, Call of Obsidian. But I still think that's that's cool. Like, you know, it's oh, it's yeah. like a cool story behind why he's dressed that way or why Proxima Midnight's painted the way that she's painted. Like, it's because of concept art and you kind of have a piece of Marvel Cinematic Universe history, you know, in, in, in toy form. 100%. And it's funny because you think about it on the flip side, like, we could easily just do a concept series, <laughs> concept art series, right? Yeah. And now we're... Uh, you know, you've got your film accurate Call of City, and here's the uh, you know concept art uh, version of that character. And uh, for me, that's desirable too. Yeah. Um, some of the concept art for for Marvel has been really crazy, and and um, it's just funny to like kind of think of it on that flip side. Like we would totally do a concept series. You've seen it time and time again. A concept art series uh, coming out. So. Yeah, like like the like when when the uh, Star Wars team produced the uh, the Macari uh, figures. You know, yeah, back, that's back, what I was thinking too. Back in exactly. the day, and I think Funko's doing it now with Pops. You know, but like yeah. it's mm-hmm. it's a it's a part of that. Um, you know, it's it's I'm air quoting heavily. It's not canon, but like <laughs> I can see them. <laughs> um, can see you know, <laughs> it's but it's still it's still a part of of that story's history, and I, I think I think we're, understanding we're... that process is cool. Yeah, and we're almost uh, ahead of our time before the movie comes out. <laughs> if we yeah. do the concept, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we're even you know thinking about like the gaming greats or any other stuff that's not canon. You know, you get to really kind of see more of what these characters are than what you're used to. Oh, definitely. And some of the some of the concept art, you know, if you look through like the you know concept art marvel books i just keep going back to marvel but um if you look at those concepts some of those 
concepts look closer to, you know, what it looks like in the comic than what shows up on screen too. So it's pretty crazy to kind of go back and hit those characters. And, and, and the comics is, I mean, again, sticking, sticking with Marvel, but like, I'm totally obsessed. I can't, I can't wait to actually see it in person, but the, the 1990s modular Iron Man. Oh my God. Yeah. That's a that's a, a figure and a form of Iron Man that is so near and dear to many of us because of how he was featured on Spider Man the animated series and of course like the the cartoon and the comics during that time obviously but like yeah, Marvel is Capcom this is like really the first time that that figure is being translated into like a true like a true physical form of that character like what what's it like taking something that's really strictly two D and turning it into you know, a, a 3D model, 3, 3D rendering. Oh, it's 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 so rewarding as a fan. That's that's what I'm here for. Uh, and, and I'm gonna go uh, super obscure, but I love 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 getting into the obscure characters. Like you know, I joked about mutated tiger shark, but even just getting tiger shark in the yeah. line is ridiculous that we're able to get those characters out. Um, so. Typically, if you see any like super deep cuts, um, you know, uh, design and engineering and myself would kind of meet and come up with some assortments. But if it's a deep cut villain, it's definitely uh, my influence, <laughs> like Tiger Shark or Whirlwind. Like I can't, I can't help myself when it comes to that stuff. So seeing that and letting a company trust us to like put it out on the shelves is amazing. Or next wave Elvis Modoc. Oh, <laughs> no one saw that one coming. <laughs> no. So, so full disclosure, uh, yeah. a, a friend, another friend, friend of the pod, uh, Khalil over at Caster's Corner, we we recorded with him. Mm-hmm. Um, by the time this airs, I think it'll be a few weeks out still. But we we had a um, a yeah, debate. So brief spoiler alert. Yeah. So <laughs> when the um, Agent M uh, posted that he was. Uh, he was going to be revealing what that box was. We, mm-hmm. we had like a 15, 20 minute long conversation about what we thought was going to be in that box. <laughs> yeah. And when it was revealed, I actually texted Dave cause I, I, he was, he was at work. I was like, we, we could have guessed until we were out of, until we were out of oxygen and, no way. and dead. And we would have never, never guessed it in a million Absolutely. years. Absolutely. No way. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm super stoked for that one, just because of how ridiculous it is. And, and uh, I think the thinking behind a lot of that was kind of you're looking at kind of what we've done, and there wasn't as many surprises. I think you know, just kind of like thinking design theory, just kind of like what what can we shock people with? And what do you think? Do we shock people with that one? I think coming off the heels of giving everybody almost entirely every MCU figure <laughs> that they've been asking for for quite literally 12 years, well, just about 12 yeah. years, with like maybe the exception of like Surtur, who was, I mean, awesome, but like we didn't have to wait 12 years for him. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like the other ones, like, so coming off of that, I think, <laughs> I think everyone was kind of assuming like that there's got to be this other like, and and I mean mm-hmm. we still haven't had all of uh, all, there there might be more reveals so I'm 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 I might be putting my foot in my mouth but w- <laughs> I think everyone assumed that it was going to be like another MCU reveal so I think th- that first mm-hmm. and foremost you had everybody convinced that like yeah I mean that's what we we thought it what we we thought that it was, was going to be guess. MCU yeah um yeah. or a what if you know with the with the upcoming what if uh, show well, on, on Disney plus yeah. But, you know, I think we all thought it was going to be MCU related. So you had us fooled there. And then to go so obscure, like so obscure and at the same time figure out a way to reuse some of that amazing Modoc figure that you guys already put out. Like, because like that's one of those ones where you make that and you're like, okay, unless we put out a different painted Modoc, this is a mold that's never going to get used again. Like there's nothing yeah. else that uses this. So to find a way to, to <laughs> reuse a majority <laughs> of that mold and make something absolutely insane yeah. is, I mean, it's absolutely insane. Yeah. You fooled everybody. Congratulations. It's, it's oh, no Jeff, problem. the shark as an accessory. Good. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Jeff the shark was so good. Uh, yeah. And just to, you know, a peek behind the tur- curtain was that, um, kind of rock and roll 
Modoc was thought of as we were developing standard Modoc. So we had that in the plans this whole time. Um, and it was just, uh, it's just, like you said, like how do you reuse this tooling, um, but also make it super special, uh, super weird. <laughs> so as you're uh, as you're saying this, Dwight just posted a picture of of <laughs> of World Domination Modoc at uh, yep. at Disney World oh, <laughs> with perfect. him. That's so good. I love hanging outside of Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, good for him. You know, carrying around. <laughs> this is like highly sought after early it's a, model. <laughs> it's a big toy too. It's a big thing to carry oh, around to Disney World. An animal. So, I would have loved yeah. to have been on the bag check line when that when that. <laughs> uh, what is this? <laughs> Imagine if he got detained. <laughs> sir, sir, we can't um, let you in with that small Elvis uh, thing. <laughs> it, yeah, I love that it shoots cheeseburgers. <laughs> um, a, so and the yeah, microphone toy. controller. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, that that was that was awesome to be a part of that project because of how ridiculous it was. And then, of course, uh, one of my really good friends, uh, Anthony Petri, he does uh, a lot of packaging and branding uh, at Zombie Bacon's. Yeah, he did the packaging for uh, illustration for the original Modoc or the the mainline Modoc, mm-hmm. uh, and then he also worked on this whole kind of experience. Yeah, the gear uh, case and everything, so so good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's extremely talented. So it's it's awesome. Uh, and I, I worked with, or I I went to school with him at RISD. Uh, so we both graduated together, and it's just we, you know really good friends. And again, like I had no <laughs> no connection uh, to that team using him. Um, and all of a sudden, I found out he was on the project. I'm like, oh, this is this is awesome to be able to you know work with a work with a friend and have something on shelf, and like we can say that we worked on this together. So, so speaking on, uh, you know, again about like all the different things that you get to work on, you know, and and all of the the the, the brands and IPs that you've worked with um, throughout your career, if if you could snap your fingers and make any toy or collectible tomorrow, you know, anything like World is Your Oyster, Absolute, oh. you know, Blue Sky, what what figure would you make? What what model? What figure? What toy? Oh, I would, I would literally. I'm such a fan of the. 80s toys and uh the, the like toy boom i would make a mad ball of literally everything you've ever thought of like NECA <laughs> scratched the surface <laughs> scratched the surface with horror toys like the freddy krueger mad ball and like the alien mad ball but i just keep going i would just wouldn't stop i do like sharp tooth from land before time mad ball nice. <laughs> yeah right like just really get it that is just a good get, call like ludo yeah from labyrinth mad ball i don't know i just wouldn't stop i just keep making mad balls um but besides that i would definitely bring back street sharks oh, yes, because <laughs> they're so awesome just the idea of sharks just ripping up pavement and then like that road just being completely undrivable <laughs> but but they kind of stop this like piranha dude from doing something weird in a pond like it's awesome but they just completely destroyed the streets <laughs> New York, New York is now undrivable. I mean, it is already they, right. Yeah, I was gonna say they they don't need any any shark help to. <laughs> it's not as bad as New Jersey, but it's 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 it's, it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Street Sharks is number one, man. Um, I would love to. It's already out there, but I would love it. Love to work on WWE, anything wrestling, um, anything He Man, because that's my OG. That's like. Where it all began for me was uh, Masters of the Universe. Um, so I'd love to work on some of that stuff. Obviously owned by a competitor. <laughs> so probably not going <laughs> to scratch that itch um, for any, anytime soon. Um, and then Dragon Ball Z, I think, would be awesome. I, I, don't, I, I dip a little bit into anime just because you guys know I collect everything. Um, but yeah, some of DBZ would be awesome to get into. Uh, there's so many toys that need to be made, but there's so many toys being made. It's crazy. If gargoyles can make a comeback in 2021, oh, Sh- Street Sharks, Street, it's like got to be right behind it. It's got to be on its heels. Thank you. Thank you. I love that they like ate cheeseburgers 
instead of pizza. Pe- like Ninja Turtles had pizza, but Street Sharks were like cheeseburger guys, right? Yep, that was <laughs> the whole thing. They they were shark versions of the turtles, and they all had like the same. There was one that was like had like I think it was the hammerhead shark was like the bad attitude one like Raphael he had, he had you had blades on his roller blades that was like the goofy Michelangelo hot. type you know it, it, yeah they 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 were archetypally the arch yeah archetypally the uh the ninja turtles but sharks there's a theme going on throughout this conversation <laughs> and it's uh tiger sharks right so there's sharks and then like the underdogs right like ninja turtles was sweet but come on street sharks you know what i mean <laughs> So we have a we have a a, a, a friend of the pod, and where D- Dave is going to ask you a wrestling question next because you kind of queued oh, up a, yeah. a fun a fun segue there. But before sure. he asks that question, um, <laughs> I have to say this just because I found it one of the most fascinating things ever. Yeah. So we have we have a friend uh, who's who's a, a pro wrestler out on the West Coast, Yuma, um, mm-hmm. and he took his son to an ar- a local arcade out there, and they had like a whack a mole type of thing. But instead of whack-a-moles, they actually used the molds for the Street Sharks hand puppets. Good God. As, as like, the pop-up things that you oh. had to hit. And he, when he posted it, I nearly, I nearly fell out of my chair because I was like, how did you leave that arcade with not, without ripping one of those out of the machine? <laughs> and oh he was God. like, I thought about it. Because <laughs> they oh. absolutely were... Straight up, they were just the Street Sharks hand puppet molds. Okay, that's definitely something I'm watching on eBay right now. <laughs> it's the Street Sharks hand puppets, but to have a whack and mole game with the Street Shark puppets, yeah, and incredible. they and obviously like it wasn't like a Street Sharks branded thing. Like they they just got the mold from somewhere and yes. just you know cranked it out, but. Oh. So that's uh, did you send me that post or, or was it a picture? Or, yeah, I'll see if yeah, I can I find it. I'll see if I can find it. it. <laughs> You'll make my night. Well, you've already made my night by inviting me to the podcast, but uh, it'll be the cherry <laughs> on the sun. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, so while uh, Eric looks for that, um, we can talk about your profile image, which is um, a scary good Road Warrior Hawk cosplay. Uh, yeah. Um, so. Uh, the world wants to know, are you a big wrestling fan? Yes, world. I am a big <laughs> wrestling fan. Uh, you heard it here first <laughs> on, the, on the pod. Uh, yeah, no, I've been lifelong fan since um, Hogan Savage years, uh, the rock and wrestling connection all the way up until now. So, like, huge, huge wrestling fan. Uh funny thing is that's obviously half of an incredible costume you can't have hawk without animal and uh designer lenny was actually the animal to my hawk and uh really funny story and fairly embarrassing we also won best couple at our halloween party party that night so (laughs) my wife was just sitting in the corner upset not upset but she knew it was going to happen that me and Lenny were going to win best couple. So his wife and my wife were kind of uh, just watching us take the title that night. Can you, can you give us an, Oh, what a rush. Oh, what a rush. That was probably (laughs) terrible, but you're trying to be quiet. I understand it's 1045 at night. (laughs) My kid's sleeping upstairs. My wife nearly 11 o'clock at night. That is as good. I think as we're going to get, you guys are so positive. Thank you. I love the positive (laughs) reinforcement. (laughs) We're, pr- we're we're proud of you. We, we're just, it's yeah. great. You did great. You did great. Oh, um, thank you. So this next section is yeah. uh, b- before we wrap things up with you. This mm. is um, our audience Q and A. So we posted a story on Instagram as we do when we have guests, and we invited people to uh, to ask questions. Um, some of these will be from specific people, and others will be kind of an amalgam of a few questions um, that, that came from, sure. from like a bunch of people that all asked something similar. So um, Dave, do you want to oh, start wait. out? Oh. Amalgam. You asked me about what IP I want to work on. What figures oh, amalgam yeah. comics is. Um, one that you brought up amalgam. Imagine that dark claw, spider boy, <sighs> super soldier. That would be amazing. If we could just get Marvel. 
DC. Who has the rights to that now? Amalgam it's Comics. It's almost like joint between, right? And it's like, but that would be, that's the dream project. But hey, very, very far from You know happening. what? <laughs> d- d- with, with the way that uh, people are absorbing other people's licenses and companies, or abs- <laughs> I, you know, list, uh, anything could happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean anything could happen. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted, but that you, you sparked that uh, that excitement, the excitement that only Dave can really bring to the table with that awesome opening. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, why don't you keep us going with the first question from our Q and A? The ener- the energy only gets better as the show goes on. <laughs> um, so uh, the first question from the Q and A: What is your favorite model that you've ever worked on? And why? Uh, okay, definitely Modoc, um, just because of the challenge. Um, also because I was uh, in the designer seat on that bad boy. Um, so having that kind of control over like the end product was was awesome. Like, and and then not only that, but trying to match the just come up to the challenge of like, can I? match the toy biz in quality um because for me toy biz is it is just an incredible and what let me back in the toy uh so it was it was an awesome challenge and i loved working with the the sculptors uh the model artist laura um uh on that figure and just you know trying to match with what uh toy biz had done and Jesse had built with Legends is just like a, a weird kind of nerve wracking challenge, but that's I, I consider that my second child. <laughs> you know, my oh what a rush was very <laughs> muted because of my child sleeping upstairs, but um, the second child he would have liked me to scream that from the top of my lungs. <laughs> yeah, that uh, I think the two like kind of gold standard toy biz figures even to this day like as as old as they are are modok and um oh my god his name literally just left my head the guy who controls like the tv universe in mojo mojo 100%. thank you yeah yeah uh, those, and those were the tail end yeah those those two build figures to this day are are still incredible and and you know for 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 what it's worth from the from the opinion of of one guy or two two people i mean that that uh the the new Modoc, I I, th- I think you you lived up to expectations on that figure for for sure. Awesome, no, I, yeah, it's I, fantastic. Thank you guys. I, I again, it was like being a toy fan and a Marvel Legends fan. That was super nerve wracking. So I'm glad people are uh, digging as much, if not more. So makes that 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 figure makes me happy. Next question is from friend of the pod and fellow uh, Hasbro designer, Mark at Overspray Studios asks, and I, he told me to ask this very specifically. So oh, what, what is the best food combination you've ever eaten? <sighs> food combination ever eaten? Or weirdest or best? He said best. Oh, okay. Well, I thought we were going to get weird with it. But best food com- I like I'm no, I love a good ribeye. A ribeye <laughs> cooked, I gotta go <laughs> medium because I like the fat to render a little bit. Um, with a risotto on the side, maybe like an asparagus risotto, nice, nice. and cheesy, creamy. Um, that's the best food combo I've ever had. I've eaten some weird stuff, so I figured Mark was going to go into the weird. Well, now, well, now that you've kind of cued yourself up for that, I feel like you have to give a weird answer too. Okay, weirdest peanut butter Twix dipped in nacho cheese straight from the can and it tasted like cheesecake. What? Yeah. So a peanut butter so so you're talking like <laughs> you're talking like like when you go to like a sporting event and you get that little cup of cheese. Like Essent- yeah. Yeah, essentially. They were, it was in college, obviously. And I had uh, I had nothing to work with. Oh, you yet. mean this wasn't yesterday? This was, yeah. <laughs> I'm eating it right now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it was like this gross cheese that you would get in the calf <laughs> and peanut butter twigs from the vending machine. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dip this in this and see what happens. And boom, cheesecake. Now I haven't had it in, you know. 
20 years or so, but I bet it still tastes like cheesecake. All right, so here's here's what we're going to do. <laughs> One of these days, we're going to do an Instagram Live. Yep. And we'll do it together. Oh, and okay. and, we'll, and we'll, we'll, dunk and, we'll dunk and eat and either vomit <laughs> or celebrate or whatever. <laughs> only, I agree to this 100%, only if we get Mark Maha to join us. I, I, you know, I... It, I don't know if he listens to the show. I know he follows us on Instagram, so we'll post this clip. This we'll post this <laughs> clip. We'll pro, pro, you know pro, propose the challenge. Instagram yeah, does that cool. thing where like three of us can all be live together. And yeah. and Dave, I'm I'm not gonna since I'm the one volunteering to do this. I'm not gonna make you eat a, a, a Twix and and, and cheese. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> I'm you. really interested to see what this tastes like after so long. You know, my taste buds have matured a bit, or maybe died off. I don't know. From eating I'll, I'll watch. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the kind of energy we're talking about. Like, yeah. yeah, you're such a good brother. I love, I love you so much. You're such a good brother. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Dave. Next question. Um. Oh, friend of the pod, um, Dave at Creepy NJ, um, asks, <laughs> "Do you have a favorite line to sculpt for in general?" Ooh, okay. Um, well, so I don't sculpt. Uh, unfortunately, I used to sculpt way back in the day. Uh, back at RISD, I used to do a lot of sculpting. I did some freelance sculpting uh, before I got to Hasbro, but I don't actually sculpt anymore. But uh, my two favorite lines right now to work on, and I do um, the paint masses more... Um, Decorating with a uh, color and um, all that, it would be Marvel and GI Joe. Um, those are just two things that I've kind of worked on or, or loved since childhood. So, being able to contribute and hopefully represent these characters in the way that everyone else holds near and dear. Um, that's 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 my favorite part of the job is is kind of taking what I held uh, and cherished as a child and like kind of hoping everyone from my generation, <laughs> younger, older, uh, appreciate them the way that I do. And then hopefully I'm representing it in the way that they, they like best. And, you know, I, I have, I have to say one of, one of the earliest things that we did um, with Hasbro professionally was we, we attended a, a, a round table that was GI Joe one. And, uh, mm-hmm. and and Lenny and and uh, and the team were were on that call, and I got to tell you the the people that are it was like us as like a general toy blog, and then literally everyone else that was on there was a GI Joe specific blog, and they had questions about the PMS colors, and they had <laughs> yes. they wanted to know why certain colors were used where they were. They mm-hmm. complimentary, like they they just wanted mm-hmm. to know like what went behind the decision making to use this green instead of that green like i we are learning so much about the the ins and outs of the gi joe community through the classified line like Mm -hmm. you guys have to know (laughs) like they're they're really like holding you guys accountable for (laughs) for decisions (laughs) and and there's 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 thought process of like if we go here we can get here later on you know there's this there's a few steps ahead that uh we're thinking too so it's not always um you know a bungle or 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 kind of just this isn't the not bungle but this isn't my version right so maybe it was someone else's version um and the cool thing is i've seen some archives where you actually have the pms colors on the old uh archived um you know designer inputs on some of these old joes um, so it's kind of awesome to see these PMS and, and I work in that world all day, every day. I have these like, you know, six different, uh, PMS books is, uh, books, <laughs> excuse me, uh, books that, you know, I'm in all day. So it's definitely something that people don't take for granted. Um, so, and, and it's a lot of planning too, but also that uh, it's awesome to work on new brands too, new, new to me, but I've known it for a while like Power Rangers and Ghostbusters and having um, model artists that work on those brands for me and like do their best to kind of work with design and come up with these 
awesome oddball characters. And there's so much work uh, that I'm, you know, I keep going back to G.I. Joe and Marvel, but that's, that's like been most of my wheelhouse at Hasbro. But there's a lot of tons of, there's a ton of um, artists that are working really hard to represent these characters the way fans envision them uh, and collectors envision them too. Yeah, after this this new what, after the Ghostbusters Afterlife movie comes out, and we can actually ask questions <laughs> <laughs> sure, about yeah. it, we, we're gonna have to revisit Ghostbusters. <laughs> we haven't ignored that you've been work that you you do work on Ghostbusters. It's just we we know it's kind of like a why 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 bother at this point? We got to wait to see the thing <laughs> yeah. first. <laughs> yeah, no, the mini puffs are really all we're aware of yeah. at this point. <laughs> yeah, and they look there's... adorable. They're incredible, and the, and the retro line. I'd seen some stuff. Uh, obviously, the fright feature. Yep. Uh, retro guys are fun. Um, Toilet terror, right? Yeah. God. Yeah. Here's some <laughs> like flush. Here's some flush. Yeah. That's Here's what it is. I'm flush. sorry. Oh man, they're gonna revoke my card. That's it. There it goes. Uh, but yeah, the, the design team is hard at work on uh, those brands as well. Um, so yeah, I, you know, you know, you guys know I like the weird. So yeah. Well, the last question that I have from uh, f- from our followers uh, is a- is another one of those combination ones. So this this was uh, you mentioned Power Rangers. This is actually a Power Rangers based question. So, sure. um, with so many different iterations of the Power Rangers and different villains to cover, how does the team determine um, which to make uh, next? There there are a lot of requests for the new uh, Netflix uh, Dino Fury. Uh, rangers and, and and more civilian characters like the 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 rangers in plain clothes and characters like bulk and uh and skull sure uh yeah just a look at the process um i don't have a, a, a direct correlation with kind of the what the lineup looks like that's more uh marketing and design um but they're constantly meeting about what is next what's what's now what's next uh, so, uh, I can't answer it as much as I'd, I'd like to. Um, but, you know, they're always looking at what can we put out there. Um, Dino Fury, actually, my son just started watching it uh, full time. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very well versed in <laughs> some Dino Fury uh, now. Um, but, yeah, the, it, it's kind of like... <sighs> the way they kind of look at it, just the way kind of Marvel looks at it, what's, what's happening right now. What's, uh, what, what's our legacy, you know, like mighty Morphin or, um, in space and stuff like that. And just like, what's that, what's that magic ratio? What's that mix of characters? So I don't have anything specific. I'm, you know, kind of generally talking about it, um, just because I'm not part of that process, but that's kind of like the idea is, is, you know, pulling from this and what's going to, what's going to be a wow, for this and like how do we uh troop build this and how do you finish off this team here um so it's kind of like the thinking across all brands really is is maximizing on shelf yeah which makes sense i mean the, the other thing too that like we're, we're always you know especially now you know when when questions like this come up um at least to us, like it com- comes up in conversation, you know, with, with, you know, people on Instagram, you know, in the comment section and everything with so many different like virtual events and con exclusives and the idea of like store real estate space, you know, on the shelf with no, you know, with no more Toys R Us out there, you know, in, in, in the U S you have to think too, in terms of like what's going to actually fit on the pegs in the section you're used to seeing power Rangers figures in, right. Or, or anything yeah. really. Yeah. And, um, it's just, it's always, again, like, it's always interesting to kind of hear that consideration and, like, that process and, like, how how you're kind of planning ahead, but also thinking behind, because, like, you have all, of, like, new and old and, you know. Oh, yeah. It's... You know, that, that, that one Mighty Morphin fan is, is is saying, oh, why can't I finish my Mighty Morphin collection? And But then at the same time, you know, that Dino Fury fan is, why can't I finish my Dino Fury collection, right? So you're yeah. you're trying to hit every aspect of this brand and um you know dino charge and <laughs> like there's so many different segments of that brand that's 
incredibly and equally as weird and wonderful. Like I guy. Oh my god, I guy is out of control. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of my favorite ones as a kid going back like oh. the, the band well, Bandai, right? Yeah, the oh, Bandai yeah. figure. Oh yeah. No, Goldar. Uh, Goldar was my dude. Goldar and Zed and we got them out pretty quick, yeah. but uh those guys were Oh. I just love the designs on that, but I guy is awesome. And there's so many more monsters too, that the company's looking at. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's just like, it's just a mix and like trying to appease this fan segment, this fan segment, this fan segment. And, and you know, when you watch these fan first Fridays and pulse con and all those awesome fans and listening to the designers talk, like you can, you can hear it. You can hear the passion. You can hear all the research they're doing and like trying to get in there and try, trying to get everybody. It's, it's, it's a never ending, uh, workload too. So, so, uh, Dave, would you, would you like to, um, fulfill your role as this show's James Lipton and, uh, and, and close <laughs> us out? Yes, of course. Um, our final question to all of our guests, what is your favorite and or strangest piece in your collection? Um, it can be one of each. It can be both. All right, you guys got another hour? For you, <laughs> all the time in the world. Our yeah, longest episode, yeah. our longest episode was almost two and a half hours. So that's awesome. That's amazing. I, I'll try and keep it pretty brief. Um, but one of my favorite things, uh, and it's up on my Instagram, was I have a full costume of the Mohawk Mogwai from Kremlins Two that I created for uh, one of those famed. Hasbro Halloween parties, um, and that thing is absolutely huge because the, the the wingspan on the ears. Uh, so you think about the. Have you guys seen the movie Gremlins too? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, obsessed, obscure, and and awesome stuff. But the the ears on like a Mogwai are super huge. Oh my so, god! Like, I'm looking the, at it now. I've never. I didn't scroll this far back on your Instagram. You this go, is insane. You go deep. <laughs> Yeah. I think I started so following you around when you posted the uh the legend uh sculpture okay. that you were that you were restoring. I'm sending this to Dave sure. right now so he can see it. Oh yeah, check it out. Uh that's my fa- like just that head is sitting in my garage <laughs> and like the the ear like wingspan is like it's like 3 feet, 4 feet like across. <laughs> and I was just entombed in that costume at the Hasbro party where I just like stood <laughs> in the corner of the party. Uh, oh, that's amazing. Like, oh, thanks. Yeah, it it was uh that's my favorite like weirdest my weirdest thing in the garage. <laughs> uh it was just like every time you open the garage there's like this weird mogwai with a, a 4 foot wingspan of ears uh staring at you with a so that that's one of my favorite things. Um and just at my desk at work there's some just awesome odds and ends of kind of history uh one of the coolest things i own is i actually got because of the history in that building in rhode island uh for manufacturing all that stuff i had worked with as i kind of said at the top of the show a lot of the guys that have been there for 30 you know 25 30 40 years um on assembly lines and stuff you know and and, and creating actual product and um, but I was, uh, one of my friends gifted me just a box of, Hey, all the O-rings broke on my old GI Joes and I don't know how to fix it and I don't want it. And it's just like a mess. Uh, and I went to the cube next to me, this guy, Paul, who's been there forever and has been a mentor to me. And just like, again, a master craftsman, um, he's a master model maker over there, but he had worked on Joe forever. And like, he had a toolkit that he got from somebody else, but it was like a toolkit that worked on original Joe O rings with like all the, uh, rubber bands and all like the, uh, it's like a T bar kind of thing that was hmm. in the crotch that held. So like that to me is like super special and like gives me, I, I get goosebumps thinking about that being bestowed upon me, <laughs> like a, like a badge of honor, uh, being at that company that's awesome yeah i I'm, i mean what, what an absolute legacy you know going back to like the the days of like the kenner acquisition and you know the this the stuff that hasbro has produced i mean it's it, it it's it's one of the most iconic toy brands in in the world so yeah yeah and then like some of the oddball like uh customs i had done 
uh, for you know comic cons and, and, and different pitches. So I kind of have some of that, like the like giant Galactus we had in one of the display cases that was monstrous. Um, the orange Fing Fang Foom that we displayed, you know, uh, and then actually we had done a bunch. Uh, me and Dwight had been pitching six inch GI Joes for a while. So I have some like OG customs that I made of GI Joes uh, to try and sell in uh, to the company where the company wasn't ready yet at that time. Uh, and I'd seen a couple other iterations of six inch Joes since then. So it's just awesome to kind of be uh, in the time period where that's a reality. Um, but it's kind of cool to have those Joes that we pitched, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. I was hoping you were going to bring up Randy Savage Deadpool. <laughs> yes, I do have Randy Savage Deadpool. The, and ul- the those... ultimate crossover. <laughs> yeah, and that was a shot across the bow uh, <laughs> because yes. of that competitor uh, product that you know kind of stole the show. Uh, but uh, really good friends over there, Bill and um, Steve and um, Robert over it uh those guys have uh, they're really good friends of mine and i i've known them for a while just from comic cons i had to like kind of throw a little jab at them because <laughs> of how cool their exclusive was uh so they came over and looked at the case and like oh how dare you but in a, in a good way uh i hope <laughs> if there's one character that's going to break the fourth wall be it on comic and a film and a in a in a display cases it's it should be dead cool makes sense <laughs> yeah and, and that's and that, and those little those little moments are like are to let people and collectors and uh, the fandom know that like we all love each other and like this is this should be celebrated and kind of like uh kind of joked about and you know there's other people out there not just this uh one central company and it's just fun to give fans that kind of moment if if they get it you know mm-hmm. yeah well, we we can't wait until i mean the, the only event we've ever been to as adventures in collecting was new york toy fair and we didn't know anybody like we we knew absolutely nobody from the other toy bloggers to like people in the industry we we knew absolutely <laughs> nothing we were flying by the seat of our pants like like i I was blissfully unaware that uh, that Hasbro was in a separate building. Like I'm walking around New York Toy Fair, I'm like, "Where's the Hasbro booth?" Like, <laughs> like yeah, I just have no right? idea. And then all of yeah. a sudden, people are reporting stuff coming out of that, like you know, out Time of the offsite building. you guys had, and oh, and yeah. I was like, "Oh, I guess they're not in here." <laughs> but like, <laughs> you know, since since then, I mean, like, you know, we're we're in New Jersey, so like, hopefully, you know, if if New York Comic Con happens. Uh, this fall maybe knock on wood you know it, uh, like it's uh, we're, we're excited to to be back in person and finally get to like meet some of the people Actually we've, we've people, been spending yeah. the last two years talking to so yeah oh my I, god that's sorry that that's some of my favorite just some of my favorite uh moments of my career is meeting fans at comic cons but i not even fans just like-minded people um you know, just because I work on it doesn't mean I don't love it as much as everyone else, right? And have the same passion. So it's awesome to just talk to people in the community and like say, "Oh, do you see this figure over there? Oh my god, this is incredible!" And and, and like be able to talk some process of what we do. Um, but yeah, just like making connections not only throughout the industry at those shows and events. Uh, you know, me and the guys at NECA and Mattel and and all these other companies, but more importantly, like the people on the floor because that's like an awesome gauge of of diehard fans, right? They're paying the money to go to a show to come and literally talk to you as a representative. So being able to listen to their feedback, which is something I miss because, you know, social media, you get uh, almost too much feedback, right? <laughs> it's just like, it's, it, you listen to it and you take in constructive criticism. And that's the, my biggest thing. I, you can't hurt my feelings if you're giving me constructive criticism. Um, and that's what a lot of the company kind of takes away. And a lot of people that I work with in the industry, like love constructive criticism because you're doing our job for us. Right. <laughs> like, like, uh, Market why research. Can I get, yeah, yeah, exactly. And just, it's, and it's usually stuff that we've already 
kind of thought of, <laughs> honestly, and, and things that we wanted to do and things that we hope to do later. Um, so that kind of stuff I, I really miss. And I've made a lot of great friends, and I'm sure we would, you know, uh, Dave with his excitement at Comic-Con would probably blow the roof off the place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I would love to talk to you guys uh, at a previous show and look forward to hopefully meeting you guys at a, in person at another show uh, upcoming. Hopefully when we get back to normal. <laughs> yeah. Knock on wood. Knock on all yeah. of the wooden surfaces. Um, so so lastly, before we let you go, uh, tell us where can we find uh, where, where can where can they find you on social media? Where can where can we see your your latest work? Sure. Yeah, it's just at the great Tonino um, on Instagram. Um, super new to the uh, social media game, um, but uh, just kind of saw the community growing there and I just love the idea of kind of uh, just images. Uh, so I was kind of skulking around like <laughs> uh, watching everybody. And I said, I I'll maybe might as well just kind of contribute and see if people find this interesting. So at the great Tonino is where you can find my Instagram. That's pretty much my only uh, social media outlet right now. And of course, uh, you know, catch, catch the latest prod, uh, projects and, and products from Hasbro on, on Pulse, right? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, at Hasbro <laughs> Pulse. <laughs> I figured everyone's already going over there, but uh, yeah, at, at Hasbro Pulse is definitely all the ridiculous drops to the insane amount of work uh, that everybody at that company is doing and, and trying to put out a product that C- hopefully people want to buy. <laughs> coming soon, the Hasbro Pulse direct deposit. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, believe me, they, they've got as much as much as much money as they've given me over the years. <laughs> I think <it> just <laughs> the pre-orders are, are strong. Well, listen, Tony, thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening on Adventures in Collecting. This is this has been an, an awesome opportunity to hear more about you know a lot of the products that we love, and and thank you for answering uh, our questions, and thank you for answering the the audience questions. But we're gonna we're gonna let you go and uh, let you get back to your uh, your evening and probably working on more <laughs> more okay. products, more right? More awesomeness. Yeah, I, I will be wrapping something up, another project up tonight. So <laughs> you guys haven't kept me up. I, I would have been up. <laughs> so thank you guys for so much for having me on the show. Again, like I said, uh, follow your page uh, and use all of your links <laughs> for pre-orders. Uh, so thank you guys for having me. It's been, it's been awesome talking to, to both of you. Thank you, dear listener, for hanging out with us today. Subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you listen, and then tell your friends to do it. Thanks also to Joe Azari, the golden voice behind our intro. Our music is Game Boy Horror by the Zombie Dandies. Find more about them both in our show notes. Follow us on social media at AIC underscore podcast on Instagram and Twitter. Stop by and say hi. Show us your toy hauls and share your toy stories. Maybe we'll talk about it in a future episode. Don't try this at home. Voidware prohibited and some assembly required. Each sold separately, not a flying toy. Consult a physician if your toy run exceeds more than four hours. This has been a non-productive media presentation. Executive producer, Frank Hablaoui. This program and many others like it on the Non-Productive Network is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Please share it, but ask before trying to change it or sell it. For more information, visit non-productive.com.